to the Coach Kyle Show. Golazo! 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 Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Coach Kyle Show. With your host, Coyote McKinnon here, alongside me, the wingman. <laughs> Great to welcome, man. <laughs> start off your show. The energy is good. The energy is a funny good. show. Listen, we're here with another um, soccer episode. Remember, this show is all things soccer. Um, holistic soccer, as we would say, on the field and off the field. We keep it real. We're really in Um, We try to be as authentic and genuine on this show with no script. We just speak to our own experiences. Um, we've lived in the environment. We've we're working in the environment. So there's there's a lot of information to go around on a daily basis. Every day there's there's something in soccer um, here. That make you, you know, make you scratch your head sometimes, or you know, really look up in the sky to to really find, you know, where God is or, or something, <laughs> yeah, because of some of the some of the things that you experience. But for us, is it's all a learning experience. It's, for us, is um, it's an opportunity to grow. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity to mm, to to understand how to to deal with certain things that you might not necessarily agree with, but it's all part of the process of growing. And we want to talk about uh, talk about that um, a bit this evening, um, the process of development. But I figure you you will be surprised in, in the direction in which you will go with this because it's 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 not it's not the norm. Um, I haven't really heard people, you know, truly uh, dive into this this aspect of the of the developmental process and you have to understand when we said development we're talking about young players who are aspiring to be international players or professional players um, in the future so went from zone one to zone two and and, and mm -hmm. some in some aspects zone three we were dealing um with with those players You've you've come up into you've come up, you came up in the system obviously, um, and you've heard about a whole lot of things. Um, uh, you heard about your, your technique. You heard about understanding the tactical aspect of the game, but how many people really dealt with your with your off the field, which oftentimes is what you bring to the field. Um, literally, I, like I said, there's only, it's only one coach, to be honest. And this was actually leading to college. So from, from, like I said, zone one, pretty much nobody except my, like I said, my parents, everybody in my family plays football. So we're coming from a football family. Everybody, you know, they know football. It's not just people that watch it. These people that play professional, pretty much everybody play pro. So I got that aspect, but from my coaches in America, none, none to be honest, until going into college and it was more so how's your grades? You want to make sure your grades are good for this college and this college. Mm -hmm. So off the field, nobody, <laughs> nobody, to be honest. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> and we like this show is for, <laughs> is for regular people who just have an interest in, in, in soccer slash football, because we speak to a wide audience um, obviously, people from Africa, people from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, people from South America uh, watch this show. So at times you will hear us saying football. Uh, it's not. <laughs> oh, okay, it's, yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's not no disrespect okay. um, to the game um, that is called soccer here in the U.S., but it's just making sure that we speak the language so that everybody understands. Yeah. So, yeah. So we get out of the way. So. We know that, you know, parents and, and young players want to be at the highest level. We know 
oftentimes you hear, you know, we just play for fun. But we know <laughs> oftentimes that's the, that is the greatest lie. Yeah. Even at the wreck level. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 no it's serious. Yeah, it's serious. <laughs> <there's> <laughs> <man>. <laughs> This is they were, they had fights at the game <laughs> yeah, with the like, referees. That's it. They had, had fights at game with the rec with the referees <laughs> at the rec games, which oftentimes rec you could it's co ed it's it's yeah. it's just it's just straight like one day a week, like kids <laughs> not they, they just they just not they have no commitment to the game. Yeah. But yet you you go to a rec game. Hey. And, Boy, oh boy, <laughs> you know, you wonder where all this fun um, that they they speak so highly of. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you hold a certain mm -hmm. standard and, and expect, expectation over their heads, um, you, your term too serious or a bit too intense. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at red games, you got fight. So, you know, I wonder, <laughs> you know, what they call that. And then you go down to travel, which is the is the other level uh, from Wreckage Travel, and you you hear the same thing. We want to have fun, but the moment the coach not producing wins, yeah, um, that, there's a meeting <laughs> that goes around the door, <laughs> and the coach is fired because you know nature will tell you that when you're in competition, you want to win. You don't want to lose. You want to win. If you're in competition and you just dare to lose, then that's a you know that's an issue. To the point where if you go play a team and your team can score five goals in five minutes, then they put in mercy rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the, the other team forget this. it's fun. If yeah. it's fun, you, you shouldn't matter if you get beat twenty yeah, zero or fifteen zero. You, that's a great point. You keep great playing point and you you have fun. You enjoy yourself. Yeah. You get a chance to play, right? Yeah. Because everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to be on the field. Everybody wants playing time. So if you get an early playing time and you lose in 10-0 or 12-0, why do I have to say pie and orange and all <laughs> manner of fruits to make to make my team stop scoring goals? So, <laughs> I, so I heard at one game, a guy say you need to say, coach, you can't say, you can't see, you can't come the passes. It's embarrassing. It? You got to say pie. He <laughs> told you that. You got to say, you got to say some fruit. I was like, what? Why am I calling fruit? In the we I'm, I'm at the market. I'm at the market shopping fruits. I'm in the grocery. Why am I calling fruits? It's like, oh, <laughs> but I thought it was supposed to be fun. Like me. Yeah. Me or any other coach <laughs> finding a way not to embarrass you as yeah. as you as you are looking at it. Uh, for me, I would I would wish the team my team could be ten because you all can come back and train correctly. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you, exactly. <laughs> you guys would probably want to be more serious in practice, or you would want to 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 right your wrongs. Mm -hmm. But like we, we we're on this point where every single parent and player want to be at the elite level but truly don't really understand what that is mm -hmm. you know many people believe it's a whole lot of things um but everything will multiply to one thing and we'll we will try to address um that one thing when we come back from this um short break Coyote, McKinnon, and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable, and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts, and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon, and company. We care. Welcome back to the Coach Kaya Show. You with Coyote here and the great Awal Ahmed. So we want to discuss this very important topic. Um, 
like I said, we want to dive into something that it's not, um, we don't really hear about a lot within youth soccer and with, within the youth development. Only at the, you know, at courses and stuff, you, you, th that is a big aspect. Uh, that is a big ax. Um, <clears throat> nevertheless, you know, go to the, the, the KM Soccer Academy. Um, dot com and, and check out the shop just at the top um, of the website and 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 get your gear. So we're 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 it's we're dripping as, as the water. So it's getting really cold. It's getting cold, um, man. These jackets sure. are, are truly warm. Um, and then we got our uniforms, which is which are very which is very light, yeah, um, lightweight. Um, and you know, the lighter the better. Mm -hmm. You move quicker. Um, just like you see uh, those athletes wearing those very close fitted Tight, stuff yeah. to make sure that nothing is hindering um, their progress. Same way. Anyway, nevertheless, we want to jump into this. And, and one of the things that we recognize from um, the National Institute of Mental Health, which 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 drive us to this topic, um, to, to share our views. And obviously, there's a lot of professionals out there that hopefully this discussion would lead you to do a more in-depth study um, and make um, good decisions about the environment in which you 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 put your young players, your young athletes, um, your children. Um, it's 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 a big thing. They said they said one in six um, youth between six to seventeen experience will experience mental health or mental illness, sorry. That is one in every six between the ages of six to 17. At six is where the introduction of yeah. soccer starts. You know, it's where you, you, you start um, encouraging the, the fundamental aspect of the game. It's, um, it's introducing the game to the young athlete being boys or girls. But the other thing there was the suicidal rate um, among 10 to 35 um, is the second leading cause. The second leading cause of death, suicide between 10 and 34. So 10, a 10 year old player is still in zone one. You know, they're still in zone one. It's a more um, in depth, what you would say, you got the introduction to the game and now it's about um, teaching the fundamentals. It's, it's about not making it so, it's not isolated to the individual, but within a team concept. But that is where you, you start basing um, your, your coaching um, on at this age. And they're saying it's the high, it's the second leading cause um, for suicide. And this is between 10 and 34. It says it says a lot about what we want to discuss today. <laughs> and um, the third leading cause, the third leading cause of death, um, according it suicide remains the third leading cause of death for athletes. This is according to the Indiana um, Law Journal. These are things that you who are listening um, and watching us live at this at this moment can go and do a more in-depth study. The reason why we start with that, because, you know, you, we talk about development and, and, and we talk about all the, what you would say, the technical aspects of things. And we talk about technique, we talk about the tactical aspect, we talk about player profile, we talk about positional profile, we talk about ages and stages, we talk about, um, relative age effect we talk about we we talk about what else we talk about there we talk about kpis nice. we talk about um key qualities we talk about all of these things we talk <clears throat> about identity we talk about we talk about a whole host of things and we cannot do no justice um in dealing with all of those things tonight excuse me um we talk about the physical aspect um, how important that is where well, we know America is big on that aspect yeah, their yeah, physical sure. having the the physical capacity to to do your task sure. uh, to complete your roles uh, for 90 plus minutes we we, we understand that um, they they're big on that and 
you know, that's <laughs> how it's set up. But, you know, what people don't talk about and what we want to talk about is the behavioral aspect. Behavior drives actions that leads to result. So you could, all of those things that, that we mentioned just now, the technical aspect, the physical aspect, the tactical aspect, um, all the other um, components in terms of building this holistic player, all of that must be multiplied by behavior. Yeah. Without the right behavior or without the right attitude, none of those things come to fruition. It's your behavior that drives it. Because whatever goes into your consciousness and 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 it because most most times on a field we're not we're not using our conscious brain um to to make decisions because we know the brain don't function well within chaos you know so there's no way that you can itemize things on the field where you could stop and say well i'm gonna do this <laughs> then i'm gonna stop and then i'm gonna do this the game is continually flowing there's six moments in the game and the four we know it's constantly going back and forth. So it's, it's chaotic. It's chaos. It's stress. Nobody works well with stress. Stress leads to many things that we <laughs> we are not going to discuss tonight. But we know that the brain don't work well under chaos. So what is the brain using? The brain is using its subconscious uh, subconscious um, state where you download all of these things. And once you download it, then you you know, in soccer, they talk about autonomy, where you, you're you unconsciously um, competent. Okay. Yeah. It's where you've done something so many times that it's, it's in you. And when it sees a certain thing, it reacts. Okay. You understand? It reacts based on what you would have put in. So what goes in oftentimes comes out. That's why... It, you know, the famous saying is the Bible actually says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So whatever whatever you store on the inside, you have to know that all of your decisions are being made through that process. What, can, are, what are your thoughts? Can it, I was just about to ask you, can it be changed over time? For example, if the, if the child from a six-year-old um, is being taught something and then they meet you at, let me see me give you a, a decent age, around 12. 12, 13. And they've been taught a lot of things like, again, uh, being disrespectful, don't pay attention, certain things like they're they're spoiled. They're a spoiled kid. And they get to you at 12 and 13 years old. Do you think it's too late for that child around that age? Or you think that, okay, maybe with certain discipline and being around certain things as being repetitive, being taught over and over again, they can be able to change? I don't think nothing is late. Okay. I think... Um, Change is constant. Okay. And this is why, excuse me, this is why this topic is so important because in order to change, you must be able to make a choice to change. Anybody can change. Okay. Because just like how you wire your brain um, to do the things that you're doing, you can rewire your brain to do the things that you want to do. Now, as you get older, it becomes harder. Mm -hmm. um, I remember a story with a, with a guy I think I, I, I spoke about this story a couple moons ago with a guy on a bicycle. So he was doing a study to show you how you can train and retrain your brain. <laughs> so he tried to ride a bicycle where when you turn when you turn the, the, the handle know, to the yeah. left, the wheel goes to the right. <laughs> so he, he could ride a normal bike, but he couldn't ride that bike for after like six months he's just trying and trying he, he can keep his balance because his brain don't understand that so he tried it on his i think it was his 10 year old son or daughter um and in two weeks you know the child was able to do it because this, this is where the brain is much more open and 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 still trying to figure out that's where the brain is at its most curiosities and it, okay. and it wants to to challenge and, and try and do all these things. You see it with kids. Um, they will always come up with something that you know is dangerous, but they don't have a clue. <laughs> but they want to do it anyway. <laughs> so he said after 
six months or so, he was able to to ride a bike. Yeah. But then he tried to go back and ride a normal bike. And people thought he was kidding. So now he had to retrain his brain from riding an unorthodox mm -hmm. bike <laughs> to now riding a normal bike. So like the, to the question you asked, you can, okay. um, you can retrain your brain. It's all about your choices, okay. um, which obviously studies would have shown that, you know, a conventional way of training or, you know, when you say conventional way of training, like kids just go to practice, mm -hmm. um, they do their 90 minutes or they do their seven to five minutes or and they do the hour and they just go, go home. Okay. Um, they, they're saying that 83% of that information is lost in four weeks. <laughs> and if something is lost in four weeks, then how can your behavior change? If you're, if my whole idea is to pour in stuff, pour stuff into you, okay. like say conventional training. Okay. If if my goal is to just show up every day and just practice and practice and practice and just go home and practice. Okay. Um, people like to use the term practice make permanent. Some people say practice make perfect. Is a type of practice. Is um, why you run in that practice. Yeah. Who are you focusing on? What is the purpose of this practice? Yeah. When? Um, those those key components you must understand it's just not practice. Yeah, right. So they're saying that eighty three percent of that um, is lost after four weeks. Well, we know if you tell a place something today, <laughs> tomorrow you want to know if you um, <laughs> if you really said anything. So it's very important for um, Ati to understand that you, if you want to be at a high level. It first must start with your behavior. Who drives that behavior? Mm. Um, you might say coaches. <laughs> a coach is just a person. Understand? The coach must understand the process because the process has the influence on the changing of the behavior. If the behavior don't change, like we said, it, it affects your actions, which your actions will affect the results. Yeah. And we could look at actions <laughs> as your choices. Whatever choice, whatever you are thinking about, whatever you believe to be true, that is what you will do. That will be your choice. Now, if, if you make a choice, then the only thing can determine if that choice is good or not is the results. Yeah? Is the results. Okay. Now, everybody's right in their own eyes. So if you have bad intentions <laughs> and you do something crazy and the result suits you, then you will feel that you're right. Normal, yeah, normal. At the end of the day, it's, it's whatever you want to achieve, you will have to uh, you will have to determine um, the, the 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 success or what you want to achieve by your actions. In this case, we're talking about soccer. This is why if you truly understand development and the importance of behavior, you will know that when somebody calls you a trainer, they are removing you from the process. You know, people say a lot of people go argue with you. Know people go argue yeah, with you. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna hear a lot about this. Then. So, a trainer is somebody. Most times, a trainer is someone who who performs physical, um, the physical aspect of the game. Okay, that's when you you call it. You say a physical trainer. Yeah. You don't say a physical coach. You say a physical <laughs> trainer. Yeah. So you are focusing primarily on the physical aspect of the game. A trainer also is somebody who oftentimes just give instructions, or they 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 always want to they always want to show you what to do based on how they do it. They do it. So when you call a trainer, you are removed from the process of development in terms of the more tactical and technical aspect of the game. 
even to the point, the psychological part of the game, because the psychological developmental part of the game has to do with leadership. Um, so when you use the term coach, you you are now part of the process of development because you must um, you must be able to show um, competencies in leadership and 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 the other aspects of. Um, the coaching process, which we will not dive into really because we're not talking about that. We're not talking about leadership. We're talking about <laughs> behaviors, behaviors and how important it is and who established those behaviors. Um, we know that for trainers, when you use the word trainers, you already removed me from the uh, from the developmental process. So now the, the prices change. <laughs> it, it, the pay change. <laughs> I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think deep into yeah. that. When like you that. call I a didn't, trainer, I didn't, I didn't think deep. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't think you call deep a at trainer, all. then <laughs> you can you can be paid as a coach. Mm. But mm. you you see, um, it's 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 okay <laughs> because most people don't understand how important okay. this process is in terms of driving the correct behavior. Where do you see some of the of, of the upcoming trainers? Where do you see them most when when it relates to um, age groups and 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 um, in certain teams and stuff? Where do you see the most? I won't say not the most. Yeah, exactly. where do you see the 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 coaches that? Okay, now getting into yeah. now getting into soccer or <laughs> never coach, never did no soccer yeah. education. They just wanna they just have the energy and, and all these things you hear. You know, I like this person with that <laughs> energy. And where what age group do you see them the most? Five to like ten. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's it's little kids. They just you just gotta run around give them energy. <laughs> just little kids, you know, it's not nothing. They don't believe it's nothing. Not the serious. Do you feel in any other aspects you feel like those coaches or not stop? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you sorry. Catch, you, you catch yeah. yourself. <laughs> those trainers are oftentimes <laughs> placed in those very peculiar situations. Mm. You ever you ever thought about it of, of why they constantly um, tried to put the players there, yeah. the coach, the trainers there. Sorry, no, I just think they just they feel like they don't really have to do anything. They just got to give the kids energy. That's pretty much it. See, that is dangerous, and because at that age, um, this is where like you're you instilling yeah. certain certain principles. Mm. At that age is where you you start in you you begin to instill um, the correct habits. Mm. Um, why, why, why do you, why in every aspect of life at that age, uh, there's certain things being taught in schools? That's yeah, sure. Why did, when you go, when, when you, even when you go to daycare now, <laughs> they have to be at a certain level oh, to yeah. start teaching, start developing yeah. certain habits because they know it has long lasting effects. Yes. Hmm. Now in soccer, you see those coaches there because they have to pay them nothing. It's cheap. They have to pay them nothing. <laughs> when that is the age, That's so great, man. you want to have some of the best coaches. I use the word coaches uh, because coaching Coaches must understand the coaching process. I'm going to talk about that a, a little bit deeper. Why it's important for behavioral, uh, for the behavioral aspect of the game. But you and and parents are so okay with that um, because, like you said, the guys running around with a whole lot of energy, <laughs> and the kids seem like they're laughing and joking, joking and having yeah. fun. Um, but cheaper. Or creating discipline and unstable kids. Yes. You really need this is not an, a mistake uh, that one in six between the ages of six <laughs> and so, 17 will experience mental illness because 
that is the age, you know, most people will tell you that that is the age where you have to start establishing um, the right habits, the right behaviors, the right attitude. You know, a child is, even a child at one and two, you start teaching them how to say thank you hey. and please. <laughs> and you start making sure that they can follow instructions. You tell them, don't touch something, don't go. You, you start instilling that level of discipline and that level of respect so that even when they're out of your presence, they still have that foundation. But they have changed that. They don't understand that you could be responsible for influencing this child in terms of how they go about their life, which we know a lot of young people suffer from substance abuse, um, yeah. depression, stress, and, and all the other things. But we see in soccer the, you know, let's just give, let's just give this, Let's just give this little guy, little guy don't, young guy don't have a clue. He just, <laughs> he just sent him into the woods and said, you know, just make sure they're happy, making, make sure they're running around, um, um, make sure, you know. <laughs> time I saw this young kid, you know, guy, the guy loved the game, passionate about the game, and I'm not saying that if you're young and you want to get into the game that you should. You know, you should be isolated and you shouldn't give him the opportunity. But mm -hmm. it's important to have somebody there who is helping Mentor, you to yeah. grow. Yeah, for sure. That is truly not just sending you with a session plan and, <laughs> and telling you run this and run that, but they're actually there and observing um, what you're doing, how you are dealing with the kids, how you're talking to them, how how they're responding to you and and helping you and guiding you through this process. So you understand the importance of what you're doing. But I don't, you know, I could blame, sit and blame the organization, but, you know, you see parents, they're, they're happy and jolly, nah, you know, gonna, especially if they're women. That's, they, get. they might have all the talented, all the talented kids on the team. They, they don't care that Sammy crying every time he don't get, he don't get as much playing time as Johnny. They, they don't they don't want this they, if Johnny scores Sammy crying because he didn't get a chance to score they they ain't worry about none of those things right they're like oh you just a child you're gonna shoot it's say. important it's important that when stuff like that happen there is enough coaching there's enough there's there's leadership there to make sure that not just player but parent understand that this is not a behavior that is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Children will be children. Yeah, they, yeah, will, just to say they will do stuff. Point. They will yeah. do stuff. Yeah. But it don't mean that it must be accepted or okay. it must just be sweep under the rug. Because down in this podcast, you we will talk about some some very important aspects. What what, what is your what is your take on that in, in terms of how how many times you saw that a guy that or or a female that you know they're just thrown into in, in into the into the fire and you know you, you don't have to do much you know just just put on two goals make sure they're busy make sure they <laughs> make sure they're energetic because you know their attention span is is not good and you know so just make sure that you're keeping them active 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 <laughs> okay yeah, we see we see that we see it in various places like i said we we travel a lot to to you know to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know when we when we watch other other academies or other places train, and we say, "What would we do?" We we don't we we tend not to criticize. We say, "If we were put in that situation, what would we do to yeah. make it a better?" Or what what is the coach trying to understand, or what is he trying to get out of it? But we see, uh, like I said, we, a lot of these town these pretty much these town clubs or these town uh, traveling teams. It's a lot of younger coaches that are coaching pretty much this level and from like i said we did our studies and you just giving me more information so the top bet the better coaches should be at that level based on so many factors but we realize that it's 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 all about it's all about that dial at the end of the day so they look at that that aspect of these younger kids like okay let's just put the a younger 
person with them to just make sure they're running around, just make sure they're they they playing a lot of fun games. Just if, if they whatever they want to do, just do it. And we we're seeing that even myself more because I'm more with the younger kids. When these kids have that type of behavior, mm-hmm. and when you try to institute structure, discipline, it's always a it's always a clash. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is? Go- I started getting frustrated, but then I remember, okay, it's it's coming from somewhere. Yeah. It's 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 this this the kid just don't he don't just grow up doing this. It's coming from somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> and unless we unless we change people at the level of their behavior, nothing will change in the result. You know, that's why academy directors and you know technical directors can be in the same position for 20 years. <laughs> I I know he I know a technical director, he in one program for 20 or 20 <laughs> odd years. He he moved from technical director to uh, to director of operations. So every team moving from now to head coach of this. So you're telling me in 20 years you haven't trained nobody to take your position. So 20 <laughs> years you in a program and you haven't trained no one. That's what it's supposed to be about. It, it it's supposed to be about creating behaviors in people beyond mm-hmm. below you for better word below you so that that so that they could now come up and run yeah. with a different with a different drive with a different energy mm. 20 years 30 years mm-hmm. you are so proud that the old oh, to the point where anybody that comes in there and says something opposite to what you've been saying for 20 years <laughs> you have a problem with that because you stuck in you have stuck <laughs> you find yourself stuck in <laughs> one place lie, for yeah. 20 years That's doing the same yeah. job and you haven't trained no younger coach mm. in that program to supersede you that is self-centered mm. and it's also arrogance because you want to be in power that you won't train nobody to be better than you to to take your position because you are so in love with that title. You are so in love with power because most people hold on to positions because they like to be in power. They don't like to, they're not gonna, they're not gonna help somebody to grow so that they take the position. You will say, well, why are you talking about this? <laughs> but these are the same people leading your kids. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. And you, you, the kids are coming to this program because they believe it represents something that represents growth and represents <laughs> development. So imagine a kid coming to, or a player coming to someone who is self-centered, who is arrogant, who believes that after 20, 30 years, he should <laughs> still be in a position of leadership and there's no person coming up there that he says okay you go and deal with this no he's front and center of everything he's at every training he's at every game he's at so if you if if you if the children go for water too quick he got to talk about it if you if you if you're going to feel and it, and you can't you're not supposed to warm up on that field he sees it he got to talk about it he he's mr micro manage he sees everything he knows what pattern you should play. He knows you shouldn't play like that because he's been here 20 years and he know this and he know the club and he this and he that. For 20 years, 30 years, you are there. And you're not mentoring somebody. You, you're not in the next position that obviously guiding this person within the position that you held for 20 years. You, you see this, you see how self-centered that is and it's self-centered and it's entitlement because you want to be in a position of power you don't want somebody else to be in that position of power so understand is well, like if every time you go to a program and you challenge somebody in that program who 
who spend all their life in that program, <laughs> you gonna get fired. You better believe it. But is the, it? But is the challenge? Is the challenging more so like you're challenging him, or you feel like because you have a different point of view? Obviously, you're different. You're you're different. So mm -hmm. you definitely gonna see something different, and it's more so you want the program to to get better. So you think you think that's a problem for some of these people that are in power for so long? When you're in power for so long, <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm explaining to you. When you in when you in that position for so long, okay, you feel like you're entitled. You feel like this title is mm -hmm. what is is the representation of you. Okay. Good leaders train people to be to supersede them to take it over that means if if i go to this level and you are this level below me and i'm showing you everything of this level by the time you get to that level your mind and your brain would have expand beyond what i've done that means that you as you your vision or your picture of things is is brighter is bigger it's because now you have more energy now you are more curious now you know the trends out there you 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 are close to social media you you know all of these things are happening i'm 50 years old and in a job for 30 years what do i know about social media <laughs> you coming up you the person will have to teach me yeah but that is what happened when you want to hold on to titles you will not see that somebody is forcing you to grow or to think about things differently what you see is a challenge to your title mm. and 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 i'm saying this because this is what they filter down to their athletes because the athletes are only a representation of what they're being taught. They are a representation of the culture. Okay, you will say, well, no, they're not. Well, <laughs> why do they talk about identity? Why do they talk about game model? Because it's a representation of the club. It, and the club is a representation of those that are in charge. That means the academy director, the technical director, the director of coaching, all of them have to sit down and come up with a culture that every single person in there, including the coaches, mm -hmm. the parents, and the players, <laughs> must yeah. follow. Yeah. So it's it's no different because the heart of the author always follows his message. Take a look at this educational video, and hopefully you can do something to help you grow within the game. But we can see some disorganization, right, and some unbalancedness within the approach. One is the ball is here and he's tucked in. This is how we can deal with the situation. By our nine, get in between here. By our eight, forcing this player to make a decision. So either drop or stay. By doing this, he's now in a better position or better angle to receive this ball here. And now it becomes a 2v1 with the 8 and the 7 versus the 3. Or because if he commits, once he commits, then there's a space between the lines. So this can now be a quick combination and now we're entering the offensive third creating chances welcome back i hope the video was helpful um, in terms of um, variations within uh, within the attacking half of the field um, you could use it and add more things to it um, that you can do as a player or as a coach. Yeah, we we're talking about the importance of that connection, which drives the behavior. We're dealing with this, this aspect of uh, within the process of development, how important is the behavior. Um, more times than not, people talk about technique. <laughs> they talk about tactics. They talk about all of these things. 
Um, but development comes with taking ownership of your behavior. Um, and once you take ownership of your behavior, it leads to better actions. Um, a person with a good attitude will oftentimes go to great altitudes. Um, so if you take leadership of that, um, for the mere fact that the propensity in soccer here is about entitlement, you know, kids are so self-consumed um, if if you are not doing if they if you are doing well and they are, are not getting the same attention you know it, it's it's a whole emotional thing you know if the team could the team could be doing well and you didn't get the same opportunity as the other player or or two players you are mad your face is screwed. You see it. Like you see it. the team just the team just did well. What about you know celebrating? Um, it's like I don't want nobody else to succeed unless it's me. Yeah. You know how many times you saw that you you've dealt with a lot of young players. You've dealt with your teams where you know players they don't even want to accept <laughs> that they're not at this level or at the level yet, but you have the the heart, and the desire to still work with them because you realize they might have some amount of potential. Yeah. But then it gets to the point, it's like you, it's like you went in front of firing squad <laughs> because in your heart, you're saying, I'm giving you this opportunity. Yeah. Um, but you're yeah, not there you're yet. Not level. <laughs> And just because you're not playing as much as the girl who might be a bit advanced in you, there's no support. Mm -hmm. um, it, like I said, is is if you if I don't succeed, <laughs> nobody should succeed. succeed. And if you succeeding <laughs> and I'm not a part of that, then I, I will make a scene. Yeah. Well, well, how many? <laughs> talk to that a bit. Oh, I, I was send the email. Like I said, that's. Mostly, I we we've learned to deal with email, so that's that's the first thing, and we know it too. We know it as coaches. We're like, oh, I already know that I'm gonna get something tonight because, <laughs> boy, this game you was not ready for this game, but I see your parents looking, I see you looking, and like, ah, uh, so I already know it's coming. I already know it's coming. But like you said, we we have these conversations and. It's it's a daily conversation because we talk to the, the athletes and tell them, hey, you know, you, you got to work. You can't show up one day to training and expect to be at any level with the kids that are coming three, four days of training. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just impossible. But like you said, you see the the to be honest, the selfishness in these kids. And like I said, it's coming from somewhere. We know where it's coming from because on Sunday, the kid is literally expecting to be playing almost 30, 40 minutes. And and is 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 just shocking to me, but it shouldn't be shocking to me because I know it's it's coming from. I'm gonna keep saying it. It's coming from somewhere. How come they don't understand that that behavior stuns their own development or stuns their growth within the game? If you are coming one day, they just said right. If you're doing conventional <laughs> training consistently, after. 83% of that information <laughs> is lost in four weeks. Okay. Out of seven days, you show up one day. What do you think that behavior will bring? You know, who, why are we not speaking the truth True, about yeah. those things? Because all the issues, you know, people say, well, at that level, it's not really. Yes, it is serious because <laughs> people get emails. <laughs> you know, people are lied <laughs> on. Seriously, People' identity. integrity yeah. and their character is put um, in a certain, in a, especially if you're a black coach. That's the truth. So don't sit there and say, "Well, oh, it's travel soccer; it's, it's not serious. that serious." Yeah, it is serious. It's serious at it wreck. Is. We just said that there are fights at wreck. Don't tell me there's not fights at wreck. I saw fights at wreck. Many, many fights with parents. And I saw the <laughs> little boy who come in to collect his little fifty dollars just to do a wreck game. He's been terrified. He's yeah. terrified yeah. by the screaming on the sides. What are you doing <laughs> in a wreck game where the kids probably just just they are there for yeah, fun? Yeah, literally, sure. literally. Um, but it's amazing how. 
nobody checked that behavior. And then the audacity of the parent to come and say, well, why did my child why, why didn't my child get playing time? And you know why they can say that at work? Uh, because most trainers, which I call trainers, there's no way you're a coach and, and accept this behavior. And it, it has nothing to do with the level you're coaching at. You are dealing with people. Kids, yeah. You're dealing with kids that will grow up to be men, yeah. will grow up to be women, that will then teach their children the very values they learn when they were young. Now, if these values are not being uh, taught at home for whatever reason, because sometimes you wonder what type of values are being taught at home with this but this behavior where it's just about you, 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 it's not about nobody else. And then you see kids and they, it's about everybody else and it's not about them. So it's not like every single child you come into contact with just have this entitlement and no. this selfish behavior no. and this attitude where if it's not me, I'm going to stomp. I'm going to go sit down in the grass and fold my hands and make a long face just because somebody didn't pass you the ball or just because you didn't get to score the goal like Jane. You And then you see the other kid who say, good job, yeah. Jane. Good job. Wow. I'm proud wow. Of I'm proud of you. <laughs> and they're the same kid. age. Yeah. <laughs> same age. So you cannot say that this is just how kids act. And if this is how kids act, the responsibility is on you um, as coaches to help the child to understand. And if you don't feel comfortable helping the child to understand, then you must bring the parent in. Mm -hmm. And you guys must be able, you guys must want to work together mm. to establish good behaviors good in in this young athlete. Mm. And if that is not the case, then the club got to be involved. Mm. So it needs to, this, in our in our culture, to yeah. say it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. I know that very well. Sure. I'm from Linden and, and boy, oh boy. You couldn't even hang out late. <laughs> somebody and the tell older you. boys around. Yeah, like, somebody go tell you better, your parents. You better go home. <laughs> yeah. Certain conversations, they were like, okay, this comes not to you. Go pick up your book. Go, mm -hmm. go read or something. Get off the road. What, do, what are you doing lineman? <laughs> so, and then if you if you operate in an indisciplined way and, and everybody was auntie, yeah. everybody was uncle, <laughs> you, better be, you better be courteous. Yeah, yeah. You, you think you could pass anybody on the street and don't Adults. say good? Adults, it's yeah. a different culture, right? Just saying that you need all those people in your life to keep you mm -hmm. with the right behavior. But most trainers feed on this poor action of what? They feed on this poor action of development because it allows them to keep their jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, if they if they if they challenge, if they challenge this behavior, you know, one. a group of parents will come together <laughs> and be like, uh, you know, my, my kid's not having fun. Yeah, he's doing too much. <laughs> you know, you know, that's the number one thing. Coaches lose their job. You know, well, obviously 75% of the black coaches down at the bottom there, they lose their job because Two or three parents who 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 are bullies yeah, for the rest for of the parents. Yeah, that's a good one. They yeah. come together and they, they they have all the influence, and they they kind of show like they know a little bit about soccer because they play rec too when they were when they were young or they play high school when they were young. <laughs> they get all of these parents to follow them, and they and they go and they say, "Oh, the kids not having fun." They make up all kind of thing mm -hmm. just because a trainer or a coach. In this case, a trainer who don't hold nobody accountable yeah. because he wants to keep his job. Do you know that you are also responsible for the bullies that, that is in the community, that is in those classrooms? Yeah. You're responsible for those bullies. That's a fact. That's you are also responsible for those self-centered kids that they have in these schools now where they could... They could look at another kid and, and, and make fun of them of what they wear or because they don't have a new sneakers. It's, it's not. We're not making it up. Yeah, nah, so These things are happening in schools. So the kids are saying, Kyle. Not, this is yeah, what the these kids, the kids are, are saying. saying to. So these, are, know, these are stuff that are happening. They have, they, they, have, they have it online too. Yeah. Kids are making fun of kids online. And, and if you check, a lot of these kids are playing soccer too. A lot. <laughs> if you got the feeling you see how they operate, it's just, it's it's no different. 
you are developing a whole lot of selfish young people and you're developing kids with low self-esteem too. Mm -hmm. Because when things don't go their way, their behavior becomes very erratic. Yeah, dangerous. They want attention. They will even lie for that attention. And they will, you know, everybody say, when a child says something, <laughs> it's the truth. Like nobody believe kids lie anymore. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You, Yo, you're nobody right. Nobody believe kids lie. You're right. The people get so defensive. Like my child don't lie. No, you yeah, say that. You nobody believe you. that they right. lie. And, right. and this this is because most of the people that are dealing with young people, maybe in schools, but we're talking about soccer. We're not talking about school, we're not talking about nowhere. We're talking about soccer. Most of these young players that want to develop, they come with these attitudes and, they, and it's acceptable by coach, by trainers. I won't even disrespect the no, word coaches. Disrespect coaches. You are a shame. trainer. You accept this behavior because it helps you to live nice with the parents. You, you're able to keep a job while you're creating a whole lot of bullies. You're creating a whole lot of kids that at some point in time in their life, they're gonna be they're gonna be depressed because it can come a time when they can't get what they want. Yeah, that's why I said dangerous. It it's could, dangerous, it, it, it right? Could get to that point. Yeah. It's gonna it's, it's gonna come to a point where nobody's gonna be there to hold your hands. You're gonna have to figure it out on your own, and it's gonna come down to the behavior that you were allowed to have yeah, yeah. that everybody else was there for their own purpose while you had now you are the representation of not being taught the right things how 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 dangerous is that i know you yeah. keep saying dangerous no i'm saying dangerous because i have a story because i have a story yeah I remember i told you you know the last the last um the last team i was working with was a team of girls so again the the Biggest thing for us at Cam say that stands out yourself and my myself is there's a holistic thing about this. Is we feel like there's something that God has blessed us that kids do come out the open and have real conversation with us about their life. Because uh -huh. like you said, there's probably a sense of they truly understand. You say when somebody tells you the truth, when somebody tells you something about themselves, you feel it. Like you feel it. And yourself, you've done it many times to the academy players that we have. You told a little bit about your background and same thing I did with the group of uh, athletes. And then I went to them. I said, hey, you know, do you guys, me tell you a little bit about myself. I know you guys go through certain things in life. You know what I mean? You don't have to tell me. We're not here for that. But I know you guys are really going through certain things that your parents don't know. I know you guys are. And one thing that I want you guys to know, there's always somebody that truly cares about you guys, that mm -hmm. truly is here for you guys to do the right things. I know you guys go through bullies. I don't care. I know you guys have been through fights. I know you guys have been through so much stuff that nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. But who are your parents and the people that are supposed to be? Are they there for you? 90% of the kids told me parents are telling them pretty most part is just try to go be friends with these kids. Don't just 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 be just be friends with them. I'll see, see if you guys can work something out. Because you know. I know, I know the mom, and the mom's a pretty nice person. And I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking, like, the kid, the, the kid is literally telling you that there's a problem that's going on. Mm -hmm. They feel threatened. They don't feel safe, and this and this and that. And the parent respond is again, just go be friends. Try to find a way to make it up. Just go be friends with the kid. It's, it's <laughs> and you, you know, people will deny this because, like I said. <laughs> Their egos, and 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 to be fair, some of them just don't even have the answer. Okay, they don't know what to do. They love their kids, and they feel like this is a process they're going <laughs> through, and they're fearful of disciplining their kids. Because, Why? Because Why? Because <laughs> kids slam doors and say, "I hate you. I hate you. Don't don't <laughs> yeah. speak to me." And a parent probably go up in a corner and cry because. They can't believe this is the child they brought into this world mm -hmm. and they operate in this manner. Maybe it's the culture, but it is never bad behavior 
have never brought good results. <laughs> you know, <laughs> behavior will give you the result. You get what you deserve in life. Okay? So the mere fact that you could go to a game Sunday and you could sit and you could look, it will answer your questions. There's, there's no thinking. There's no thinking at a high level. I went to a game just only only last night. You went last. I was my last it's, game. <laughs> it wasn't even watching. <laughs> this, the level of thinking is, is, is poor. When you look at the principles of the game, you look at um, the technical qualities that come in the game, the only aspect of the game that you know that you know is truly um, is truly representing the game is the physical it's aspect. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I watch a I watch a game, youth nineteen, and and this, you can't even see three passes. You can't even see three passes, and you know why? Because the behaviors are not one uh, that truly allow them to develop. All the aspects of the game, which when you, when you talk about behavior, is the way you think, is the way you are open to learning. There's no learning. There's no, the, you cannot, there's the, the teaching aspect of the game or the coaching aspect of the game is, is non-existent when you have kids who have bad behavior because they lack the discipline. They lack the ability to be open to criticism, they lack the ability to deal with, you are not as good as yet. You're not as good yet. They can't, if you don't, listen, when I was a young player and, and, and I was playing in all them national teams and I was 16 years old and I was a youth 19 captain and one time I had this coach from Columbia, he just dropped me. He just dropped me out to nowhere. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was 16. Think about it, I'm 16, I'm embarrassed. Right, yeah. <laughs> because I'm, th I think I'm, I'm the, I'm the it guy, you know. And the coach called me. I was like, I'm not going to see you. You, you're a clown. That is a reaction in every, every six yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I'm not going to. You, you're not talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I decide I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. And, and I, I'm, today I'm, I'm grateful that I went because it changed my life. You know. He said you didn't get dropped because you can't play. You get dropped because you need to understand. That where you are now, it's your that's where that's your current state of awareness. There's more to this game. There's there's more that you will see, there's more that you will have to experience, there's more that you will have to go through. If you want to be a good top player, then you're gonna have to go through some things that will will question you, will ask some very difficult question of you. So if you don't change your behavior. <laughs> If you don't change your attitude, then you will you will never go far. You will limit your in you will limit your own development. And I see it every day because players have the audacity to think that they could act like they they accomplish something. So if you're good, <laughs> then who's the kid in Barcelona? Who's 16 and playing at and the team. professional team and already? First team, yeah. You don't even have a first team in your program. <laughs> but you but you what? think you're a superstar. And you you see the attitude is so, you know, it's so mm -hmm. arrogant because no questions are being asked of them. People, you know, the club is concerned. <laughs> <laughs> the club is concerned about the registration. You understand? The director concerned about recruiting so he could get his percentage. You know, if you're a director of coaching, the more players you bring, you know, the, the percentage remains the same. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the technical director, he's concerned about keeping the coaches in line so he looks like he's doing his job. And the coaches trying to keep their jobs <laughs> by making sure that the ego of the parent Strokes. are being stroked. <laughs> so parents are concerned about their monies. My child not playing? That's not what I pay for. Yeah, That's not what your policy says. says. I don't care if my child can't kick a balloon. 
Yeah. My child need to be on the field because when my child come off the field, he's shaking, he's crying, he's he's distraught. Yeah. He don't want to play anymore, and I'm concerned because he's not having fun. These are some of the things that you hear. So what are you telling me? You know, somebody sent me their policy of the playing time before. A parent? Yeah, they <laughs> have it. I they have it in, I listen, didn't know they had it. They have it in oh the in in the in the most safe place possible. <laughs> so word. every game they take that out. Some of them walk with it at the game. And after a certain time pass, you look at the time and be like, okay, let's start putting together this email. Yeah, they start putting oh they put together God. those emails from the field, bro. That's scary. You understand? <laughs> but <laughs> They want the players to play at all costs. So everybody is concerned with everything. And all the young player has is trust for you, the adults, who are responsible for channel, channeling the right behavior to improve the actions of these young people. So that the result is not just about the game, but the result is about how they live, how they, the, the standard, the, the selflessness that they possess, the humility that they possess, the desire to, to, to support others in this journey, to rejoice when others succeed so that they, that person can make room for them to succeed. Because I said, if you're going to hold somebody down, you, you definitely got to stay down. You can't hold somebody down standing up. So think about lifting up somebody. They're going to be able to pull you up. Yeah, of course. And both of you will grow. It don't matter how you grow, but you will grow. And when that person stops, then you might be able to supersede them. What about, what about that? You know, like I said, everybody has concern about their own position. When you, when you as a coach act a certain way, as a coach, I'm saying not as a trainer, when you're a coach and you act a certain way, which means to instill the right process, to instill, and you will ask the question what that process is. We'll talk about that just now when we end. But then you, you are seen as the person who going against the green. Mm -hmm. You're going against the team. You're not a team player. Mm -hmm. When everybody is studying about you know, these are the people who pay you. <laughs> you, know, you, you tell a, you tell you tell a director that you know the coach need the, the players need to come. Oh, and nobody else in the club is doing that. So if you do that, you know that's going to cause a problem. He don't care that that the kids are 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 sick. He don't care that the kids are injured. He don't care that the kids are sore. He don't care not. He don't even he, didn't, he don't even know what the kids have to eat. He don't even know if these kids have some terrible migraine that mm -hmm. they can't even... He don't care about mm -hmm. nothing. The first thing he wants to say to you is, listen, we don't need no problems with this check. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> you, we don't need no problems with this check. So guess what? Just go there and do anything. Just even if you go there and walk around, it could work. <laughs> Because they're out there. Yeah, and they can't take off. They can't Man, take this off. is that. Yeah. And these are the people that lead in Kids, and got no integrity. What do you say? Now? We're about to end this podcast <laughs> anyway. No, I, what I, do you I, say to those people? No, nah, it's scary. It's, I, I'm going to put a lot of blame on the parents. Because I remember, I think both of you, yourself and mine, went to, went to a game. And then you told me, obviously, your awareness is to another level. You said, well, watch when their child don't have the ball and see if they clap. And that's what you mean. They parents, they go, of course they're gonna clap. You said, no, watch these parents and see when Johnny don't have the ball if they clap. So I'm watching, I'm watching. Johnny has the ball. Hey, go Johnny, go Johnny. So then Johnny passed the ball. <laughs> I was like, yo, you saw that he said, see what I'm talking about. You see what I'm talking about? I was like, yo, that is, and they're on the same team. These parents are on the same team. He said, yeah, look where it cut, look where it comes from. Yeah, that shocked me. I was like, yo, that and every time after that, I just start that's what I start looking for. And it's and it's a trend. It's a trend. They're all self-centered. And all of these trainers and these clubs who talk about core values, 
uh, and all of these things. What are you talking about? This is happening every Sunday. This is not like some mistress. <laughs> Go talk to one club and tell me if that entire club, if they want to be totally honest, every single Monday, their emails about something. These kids will go cry and they will yeah. create a whole scene. And you got 15 year old, 13 year old, excuse me, crying and going on just because you didn't have enough playing time. It's one game. <laughs> you crying yeah. because somebody didn't pass the ball to you. <laughs> you know, our emotional mind have no situational intelligence. If you always emotional, 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 there's no, there's, you, you cannot rationalize nothing. One guy told me, parents will never be rational with their kids. That means you are never honest <laughs> with your kids. Yeah. So you could see what happened when you are lovingly honest with a child. They don't understand that. They feel like that is hatred. When you are honest with a child in terms of their behavior and trying to help them to change their behavior so that they could change the result, so that they could change where they are to get to where they need to be, they see that as like you don't like them. Yeah. You know, crazy. And you like, what? am I telling you something that's wrong? <laughs> no. Am I telling you no. something that will hinder your life no. moving forward? Okay. Some people might say it's how you say it, but I have come to realize it don't matter how you say it. You really don't. Yeah. You could sit them down and, uh, and talk to them yeah. like you're the priest. And it was, who dare you? <laughs> Just give my kid playing time. And let, let my kid have fun, even though they can't play. Yeah, that's how they develop. They got to play. I watch a game yesterday too, right? And I literally look at the coach, hold his head, because he had to make a change that I know he didn't want to make. <laughs> And I'm sitting there and saying, look what this guy have to do. <laughs> Just to make sure that you don't get the email. Like, you still can get the email. Because yeah, no, you get it. you're lost. Yeah. <laughs> and he lose the game literally because, of the because he had to, he made a change. And I literally watch him like just you know, you, uh, as a as a person in soccer, yeah. you know, you know the feeling like. Just don't say nothing here because you know you're gonna get in trouble. You're probably gonna lose your job. But he literally had to make a decision because he has to satisfy somebody's ego, somebody's emotional instabilities. <laughs> he has to satisfy because he's not going to be able to say, well, we made a decision because we thought that was the right decision to make. No. That's not what we pay for, and we didn't drive an hour or two hours here to don't play. But you didn't tell me that. <laughs> so what happened to these professionals? Was, was they fly like they gotta go like two Think hours? Like, they're training five two days, days yeah, a week, yeah. And the coach said, mm -mm, "You don't nah, play. You come and watch the game." <laughs> so when will your child get to that understanding to play at the elite level to know that your behavior must drive? So. I want to leave some things with you that maybe, maybe it might help you. Maybe you might. I know you stubborn and you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not gonna. It's <laughs> like who these guys think they could tell tell me what to do. Just put the ball out. We gonna tell ya. We gonna tell ya anyway. He's not in those suits and tie. You know. What? Where's your Where's your doctorate to, to tell me about behavior and thing? Well, one out. <laughs> One out of every six will commit suicide. That's a serious... One out of every will have mental illness. Sorry. Yes, At the age, from the age of six. And suicide is the second. So second. that should... Well, well, you're obviously listening to those people who wow. are in a position to tell you. So hopefully you will listen to, 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 to people who are actually in soccer dealing with these things every day, dealing with young people who would not dare to tell their parents how they depress mm -hmm. because you are more concerned about your ego rather than speaking to your child about what is really going on with them. Mm -hmm. Why are they struggling with confidence? Why are they struggling at this age with self-esteem issues? Why are they 
struggling with self-worth? Why do they feel they have to model all day on Instagram to be powerful or to feel empowered? You know, why are you not having this conversation? You tell them they live in a free life. But those kids, you know, when you when you are coaching and 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 kids could see genuineness in you, the, the ones who are hungry, who are hungry, and when you are dealing with righteousness, you know, you hear a whole lot of things. And, and when you do confront parents, I, well, um, you know, I, I recognize somebody. Star line. Stop. 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 Continue to teach your kids that the existing result is not necessarily their present. It's just, it's just their present state or it's just their current state. It's not necessarily their potential. So what is happening now don't mean that that's what's going to happen forever. Help them, you know. Your potential is infinite. As long as you have an honest passion and you have an honest desire to be good in this game, there's no secret. It's hard work and dedication. And if you're not where you want to be yet, that means you haven't done all that you need to do yet. So don't make decisions and, and don't allow your emotions. Don't allow the money that you pay to invest in your child to dictate the behavior they need to have. This is holistic. This is, this is your child's future. This is your child's mental health. This is your child. Uh, you know, staying away from substance, uh, substance abuse. This is your child staying away from drugs. This is your child, you know, going to somebody else to uh, to to depend on them to mm. to to feed whatever they feel like they're lacking. This, if you're not afraid, in 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 taking the responsibility to make sure that your child is demonstrating a healthy behavior. <laughs> then you close in the door. And unfortunately, things happen that you cannot fix, that you cannot change. You know, coaches got a, 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 a you know, if you're a coach, you have a great responsibility to, to, to set um, the respect factor. You know, let all the kids share in what is common. Yes, we talk about individual goals and, and all those things, but all those things must be a part of the holistic approach. So if you dare, you must have a common goal, and that goal is to see everybody succeed. That means today might not be your day. You must celebrate with those that are doing well. We, we have a culture that that don't exist. Just go watch every Sunday. Even when you win, somebody going with their head down. Yeah. <laughs> crying because they didn't play as much as they wanted to. And that is okay because that's how they're supposed to behave. But then this is where you come in and say, listen, that was just today. Mm -hmm. There's tomorrow. Keep going. What about the integrity factor? Be a whole person. Mm -hmm. You're not directed by your ego and your entitlement. Because you're gonna be you're gonna struggle with honesty. You will struggle with reflections. You will struggle with your evaluation at the end when it don't look like how you want it to look. Have good behaviors. We didn't get to touch on all the things we want to touch on yeah, tonight. We but we you know, hopefully some of these things will, will encourage not just parents, not just players, but this whole culture. Because you're responsible for the, the bullying that happening in school. Some of those bullies are in your program <laughs> yeah. and you don't know. Or they do know. Or you do, do know, know, and then you say, Well. They do know. When they come to my team, they ain't a bully no. <laughs> oh, yeah? 
They had kids bullying other kids in teams that I've been a part of. It's true. And I had to address it. Shut it down right away. I had to shut it down. And they do it in secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do it in secret until parents are brave enough to come and say, Coach, this is happening. Please, I want you to address it, but don't make a scene. <laughs> the parents scared. They're scared. They're scared. They feel like they're going to kick out the club. No, they're scared. What madness is this? No. Don't let me start calling your names. <laughs> Get your act together. Because you're creating bullies. You're creating kids that will look at other kids not at their levels or don't have what they have and they think that is okay mm -hmm. to make fun of them. What are you teaching these kids in these clubs? Because they're in your clubs. They come into your training. You term yourself to be leader of all things. You are the leader of the elite. We are in the grassroots. We can't lead at that level. So since you're leading at that level, then this mental healthness, this mental illness need to change from one out of six. It should be one out of 40. Because among the kids that are playing soccer, soccer yeah, it's, it's... and you have the responsibility to change their behavior, and this is still occurring, suicidal rate between 10 Oh, you say, oh, we can't change that. That's So why are you in the position of leadership? You are the leader of elite, you know. So all the, all the kids who believe that they are great and they are good, they're coming to you. And when you go on Sunday, you see the attitude, you wonder. And then you hear the stories. Make fun of kids, disruptive in class. Mm -hmm. Disrespecting the teacher, your kids doing those things. So you don't care about that. They pay their money. The parents are doctors and lawyers. So they pay their check first. So guess what? Yeah. Some things you just got to look past. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like, man, <laughs> what happens when that child bully your child? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you could fix everything. We're not saying you can fix everything. We're saying it's something that you guys need to pay attention to. We know the technical aspect. We know all of those, the tactical aspect. We know the KPIs. We know all of those things. But you must multiply all those things to behavior. Because if behavior is not correct, none of those things will change. Because it can come a time when none of those things will be able to help you because the person will be just as technical as you. The person going to be just as tactical as you, or better. The person going to be just as big or faster. He's going to have to have character. And it's the behavior that you possess every single day will determine your success. Final words? We, 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 we had the people long on this. Yeah, podcast. no, we had them long, but it's you know, something but, that's, that's true to us because yeah. we see it every time. We yeah, see it every time yeah. because... It's a big thing for us because we deal with youth, youth, um, youth sports, and these kids' behavior for the most part is poor. It's extremely poor, and again, that hinders the process because we can't do nothing. You don't want to do it. I, then you start seeing you get coaches that get frustrated. And it's just, it's always a clash. So, like I said, you can always reach out to us because we are we are here to to help in that process. Maybe I know if parents have reached out to you. Can you talk to my son or daughter? Can you, can you, can you help us in this process of making Johnny a better person? We believe that he respects you. We believe that you have an influence in his life, and whatever we can do to help will help. And I think that's a beautiful thing when, like you said, a village comes together to help a child to get to his next his potential to reach his full potential. Yeah, because the only thing that the only thing that changes behavior is asking is asking questions. That is the greatest intervention that you can have. Is asking questions because it forced people to think deeper. It forced them to go deeper into themselves, and 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 they realize that they got some things there that you know <laughs> they, they didn't really recognize or they weren't conscious of, and it drives the behavioral change. And if we're not asking good questions and we're not asking the question that force people to think about themselves and what they're doing, mm -hmm. then you are not doing nothing. Your words can't change nobody. Is the questions 
um, that you're able to ask that could influence. And that's the only thing that influenced both consciousness and subconsciousness, um, which has which got a direct impact on behavioral changes. So we challenge you, you know, think more about the person, like you said in your in your in your whole um developmental module person first <laughs> person first <laughs> i encourage all all the people that believe that these oh, clubs man. and these elite programs and most of them you know why discrimination still exists in youth soccer mls just mm. put out something yeah, 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 talking yeah. making rules the young people young people are discriminating their own peers playing on the same team mm. Young people, this is not a this is not at senior level now anymore. This this is in the MLS next youth level. Youth level is it is in public view. Yeah, we yeah. we're not saying we nothing. We're, we're not saying nothing that's not in public view. They might say we're making it up. That's they are now putting in rules and they are now putting in policies to, to deal to try to stamp this out. MLS next, I wish you all the best because nothing is happening at these clubs. Mm -hmm. You guys need to be more in you guys need to be more mm -hmm. into these clubs yeah, to see what on. is happening. Hands on. What behaviors are allowed to occur in these clubs? You got 13 year olds using all kind of foul language on the field, mm -hmm. and their parents right there, and yes. they said that's okay. Yes, yes. That's okay. They even got respect for their own parents. Oh yeah, respect your own parents. Like respect the adults on the field. Mm -hmm. Like conduct yourself correctly. They cursing the referee and, and shouting at the referee. You, you 13 player, you shouting at the referee, and the coach still have you on the field, and the coach shouting at the referee too. With a you 13 player shouting, at the listen, MLS next and, and and hire some people to <laughs> go around and yeah. and and see what is happening in these clubs on a day to day with the behavior of these kids and the behavior of their parents because what you're trying to do at that at that level nothing ain't going to change yeah. because you're trying to change when it get to the when it get to the worst yeah yeah you not you have to change it from what is happening day to day because the behavior of these athletes and these clubs are not a representation of what you're trying to change because most of them are entitled and they and the clubs feeding the egos of these parents. So what behavior will change? What behavior will change? So now it's coming into your game yeah. that you have young players having racist behavior against kids that don't look like them. It's ridiculous. If it's happening at the at the coaching level, what do you think it happen at the players' level? Then it's going to happen at the parents' level. And then what's going to happen to your game? It's a revolving cycle. I challenge you. I'm glad. I'm happy that you put in, uh, you, you, you're trying yeah, to, yeah. To, to make sure that you put things in place that it don't affect this beautiful game that we all love. But I'm telling you, you need to hire a whole committee that going down to these clubs and identifying with some poor behaviors and recording these behaviors with these kids and their parents and the MLS next need to, to maybe this is a maybe this is a they good find. maybe this yeah, is a good yeah. uh, a good thing for them to start thinking about yeah. because you need you guys need to really have people on the ground really checking What's the behavior on? within these within these within these elite programs of course. Because in the travel program, it's worse. Hey, you but nobody ain't checking that. Yeah, yeah, but you know the travel program players become any elite players, yeah, right? Yeah, they, they have to because they got nobody else. Listen, let's end this podcast because we can be here till 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Listen, we have some good kids within our program. And they're from different walks of life. And I must give them the respect. Because they conduct themselves, not just as soccer players, but they conduct themselves as humans. Of course. And they man. challenge every day, not to be better soccer players, but be better human beings. Because who you are is what people will see on the field. Mm -hmm. And even though you're not superstars, and, and even though you, 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 you're from the grassroots, I challenge you, you know, to stay true to what is right. 
stay true to 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 being selfless and to holding a high level of respect not just for yourself but your peers and success is imminent success is not a result in a game success is life how you live your life how you pursue your purpose and your goals and if you turn out to be a great adult to make great kids and 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 have great kids that will make great kids you've done your part yeah. even if you don't play soccer play soccer and be a bum <laughs> be an alcoholic <laughs> be Strong out on drugs. Yeah, yeah, what do we accomplish? And then what have you accomplished? <laughs> nothing, nothing, man. Let's 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 help our kids. You know, let's help our kids. And hopefully this message reach your heart. And I don't reach you just your mind because we know you can come back blazing. <laughs> <laughs> we got more. We got so stay more. blessed. Have a good week. Stay safe, and and continue uh, to push for better behaviors. This is the Coach Kyle Show, a podcast of two billionaires, not afraid to discuss the real details of all things soccer. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified, experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun. So why not name it Rec? A elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.